Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're gonna take a look inside the X20 Pro. Okay, so this is the inside of the X20 Pro. And the reason I've taken the back off was, firstly, I wanted to adjust the gimbals, but then I noticed that actually these gimbals can be rotated. So in my initial video, I didn't think it could be. On the front, on the X20S with rotatable gimbals, there's little markings on the actual front of the transmitter, just here, so you can see the different positions for the gimbals. They weren't actually, well, they're not actually present on the Pro, but if you can see, there are actually four screws, uh, one's hidden under that ribbon cable, and there's another one down there, which you undo and the gimbals can rotate, and you can probably see that I've actually already done that on this radio. So that was the reason I took the back off. The reason I'm making this video is because there's a couple of things that you need to be very careful of when you do take this apart, but we'll get to that later. I just want to identify a few things within this case that you may find interesting. First of all, a brief part about the back. It is in three parts. There's the central plastic part, and then there are two shoulder bumpers. Now, to do most of what you might want to do, you only need to remove the side shoulder bumpers. You only need to remove this middle plastic part if you want to change the real-time clock battery, which is in there, or you want to rotate the gimbals, or you want to change the antenna configuration. Anything else you can just do with the black plastic cover still in place, which I would highly recommend because these are the two Bluetooth modules here. And you can see they have very tiny antenna connectors. So when you do take the black plastic off, be very, very careful of that. To take the side grips off, there are two plugs, which I'll show you when I put it back together. Right, so let's talk about the parts that you'll need the centerpiece off for. First of all, as I mentioned, there's a real-time clock battery, which is located here. So if you need to change that, you will need to take that off. You may even need to take these two boards off as well. It might be able to come out without removing that. So that is the first thing that you may need to take the back off for. The other was rotating these gimbals. And there are just four screws there, there. There's another one in there, which you might just be able to see. And there's another one just under the ribbon cable. And you can get to all of them without removing anything else. You just undo them, rotate the gimbals to where you want them, and tighten them back up. Don't over tighten them because this is just into aluminium, so you don't want to rip the threads out, so be careful of that. So we can see the antenna configuration. We have these two blue cables here going into this side of the screen, which is for the 2.4 FSK. So likely we have one antenna up the side and one antenna across the top for the 2.4 on that side. There are going to be two internal cables going into the other side of the screen, uh, which is for the LoRa. So we will have one up this edge and then one across the top. So that's the 2.4. You'll also notice that this black cable and this black cable are going to the external antennas connections. So this is the external antenna connection for FSK. This is the external antenna connection for LoRa. This is the 900. So we have an internal antenna. It's not connected at the moment because as you can see, it's in the handle again. So that is the internal antenna for 900 megahertz. And this connector here is for the external antenna for 900 megahertz. But there are only two antennas. Right, so now we're done with this part of the radio, I'm actually gonna put the middle part of the case back on. So this is like a reverse disassembly guide. So this is the back of our case. So you can see here the antenna for the 900 megahertz internal and also the antennas for the Bluetooth modules. So the first thing that we need to do is actually plug this antenna back in. So let me try and do it so you guys can see. Right, so that click clips in. So we'll bring that around to this side and circle that around. That should just slide straight on. And we just wanna make sure that yeah, that lead is not snagging in that grip, which that seems fine. So yeah, make sure you plug that back in. Now we have our 
back in place, we can put the screws in. Now there are two types of screws in the back of this radio. There are these pointed screws and there are the machine screws. Now the machine screws go down the bottom because they're screwing into the aluminium. The pointed screws go at the top because they're screwing into the plastic. And this is, I believe, a two and a half millimeter uh, hex key. So we're just gonna screw that in now. And the final thing would be to reconnect these little Bluetooth antennas to these two little connectors here. I'm not gonna do that on camera because these are IPEX4 and they are extremely small and delicate. So I will be very careful putting these back on. If you're taking these off, be very careful when you remove them. It's very easy to damage these antennas. If of course you're doing this in the reverse, the other thing that you'll need to do before you take this part off is to take the battery out. So just remove it and then unplug the balance lead. I'm not gonna plug it back in yet because I'm gonna finish up with this. But first, let me plug these bits back in. Okay, so we've got our Bluetooth plugged back in. So now we're at the stage where we've only just removed the cheeks. And why would we only want to do that? Because we may only want to adjust our gimbals or maybe change from mode two to mode one or something like that. So on the gimbals, we have a couple of things we can adjust. We have these two here, which are the sort of brake and the ratchet for the throttle. So on mode two, these, this one will be down for the ratchet, this one will be down for the brake. And you notice on this side, they're both completely up. If you want to swap the throttle from this side to this side, undo these two and do this one up pretty much full and then adjust this one so that the ratchet is to your liking. Everything else is done with the spring tension and the spring tension you can just see here there's a little hole with a, a allen key in it and also here there's a little hole with an allen key in it but uh, with these rubbers if you pop up the end with the circle which is actually easier to do with the grip off Inside there, you can, if I can point to it, just there, see another hole with the Allen key in. Of course, on this one, it's offset slightly because I've rotated the gimbals, but you can still get in there to do it. And the same with this side. Down there, you can see the little hole with the Allen key in it, so you can adjust the spring tensions. Now this is a small Allen key. These are really cheap Allen keys. Get decent Allen keys because I find the ball end on cheap Allen keys never works very well. But yeah, you can adjust the spring tension using a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. So you have four, four adjustment holes. One, two, three, four. So that's all you'd really need to take the side cheeks off is if you wanted to adjust the spring tension or change from mode one to mode two. So let's put the cheeks back on. Right, so here's the cheek. You can see all this uh, CNC machine goodness. There's one connection in there that you will need to take off if you're removing the cheeks and put back in if you're obviously putting them back in. And that is just for our two-way switch here. This is nice and simple. There's a connector block here and you just plug this into it. So it's gonna be that way around. Uh, you can see like the little pointy bit in the middle and there's a slight slit in the case there. So they, those bits go together. So let's just plug that back in. And then the grips will slot in. I found that the best way to remove it is you can just about get something slim under this corner and that was the best place to sort of start getting it up and then it will come up the rest of, rest of the way around too, which I'm gonna to have to do now to take, take it off to put it back on square. So it is a nice snug fit. And these use three Allen keys. There's two at the bottom and there's one at the top. And these are the same one and a half millimeter that you use to adjust the gimbals. The last thing we need to do is put the battery back in, and this is using a standard balance connector. And inside here, the pins are actually at the top. So that means 
on our connector, we need these two little rails towards the top. So that just pushes in. And then it's just a case of inserting the battery. There's actually a cutaway here, so that cable should disappear in there quite nicely. And then put the back on. So the last thing we do is just power on to make sure that everything is working well. Welcome to Ethos. Fail safe, not set. Switch warning. So what we've done is we've taken the back off, so we need to make sure that our switches are still working okay. So the only ones we've removed, we can do a hardware check of the two latching switches and they're all good. Nothing else was really tampered with. If you've got a Bluetooth device, try connecting it, but of course these, this should be fine if the antennas are plugged back in correctly. Final thing is if you've switched from mode two to mode one or you know from mode two that it ships with to any other mode, I'll show you where you can change that now. So we'll go to the system menu. Of course, we made the hardware change. Let's pretend this here is our elevator and this is actually ratcheted and it's the throttle. If we go into sticks, you can see the different modes at the top. So you just change that to mode one. Uh, it's complaining the throttle's not in a low position because it's in the middle. Um, so we just go, yes, we now have throttle here, aileron here, elevator here, rudder here. I'm going to change it back so I don't forget. But, but um, that's where you change it after you've done the hardware modifications. So it's nice and easy to make that change. So there you go, guys. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also click the subscribe and bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people so they can learn about this too. And also any other videos that I make that you may find interesting will also pop up in your uh, alerts. So maybe I'll be able to help you out in another way too. Thank you very much for all my supporters, patrons, people who leave super thanks. It means a lot and it really does help keep this channel going. Thank you very much, everyone. Fly models like you stole them. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye.